dolls welcome back to our channel i hope you guys are fabulous today so i have been mia once again i haven't been consistent and i'm very mad at myself but i want to tell you guys i did however i did film and there was a series i was going to do and it was a personal more serious video but i felt like after i rewatched it and edited it it was supposed to come out Monday. Um, it felt kind of rushed. So, and this is something that is really important to me and really serious to me. And um, something that I want to put time into. So, I am going to hold off on that for a couple of weeks and get back to regularly scheduled programming and take my time really, really putting my heart and soul into that. So that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, but for this week, um, I have some Valentine's Day looks coming up. So if you're going on date night, I'm going to do one fun one and then like one glam date night one. Um, but I'm going to do one that's all colorful and Valentine's Day and like hearts and sparkles and all the funness. So they always say like in the movies, do one for... Do one for the fans and then do one for you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one that you guys like and then one that I like. So that's what we're going to do. I took a poll. You guys voted. And you guys chose glam. And I just said, what the hell? I'm just going to do both. So, um, but today we are going to do something a little bit different as well. I saw this really cute like Q&A challenge on Beauty News and I love the questions. I don't know where they got the challenge from, but it's a bunch of Q, it's just a Q&A. And so I wanted to sit down and kind of do that with you guys because I don't do a lot of that. So um, it's a way for you guys to get to know me and you know, Learn some cool, interesting crap that might be a little challenging for me to answer, you know, and get a little personal. Um, but before we do that, I started a new subscription. And I've done pretty much all the subscriptions except for the Fit Fab Fun Box, which I am going to order. I'm going to actually order that this month. Um, but I, I've done Sephora Playbox was the first one I ever did. I did, um, Birchbox, hated that one. Um, Sephora Play was good when it first started before they went national. They were only doing it in certain areas and the samples were really big and really good. Um, they weren't full size, but they were like deluxe full size samples, all of them. And now they're just mini itty bitty samples that you pay ten dollars for and I just think that's so stupid yes they are all high-end stuff that is sold in Sephora but Ipsy is also ten dollars and yes they do a lot of indie brands but they do high-end brands as well and I get a mixture of full size I usually get at bare minimum at least two full size products from Ipsy in my bag and a couple of deluxe samples and usually one sample size. But for the most part, they're deluxe or full size in Ipsy. And BoxyCharm, you guys know, I'm a diehard BoxyCharm fan. And they're full size. Yes, they're a little bit more. They're like 20 I pay $22. And they're all full size, high-end, sometimes indie brand. But mostly high-end brands that are sold in Sephora and Ulta. So... Then there's all kinds of different ones. The freaking subscription boxes have taken off. There's so many I can't keep count. Um, I did just sign up for the Allure box. Uh, I'm still waiting for that to come in. But once it does, I'll review it for you guys. I've seen it around. I wasn't too excited about it. But this past month's curated box was really, really good. It had a couple full-size pharmacy um, <clears throat> sample, or not sample, full-size products in it that are just being released, and I'm super into skincare, so I decided to jump on it, and I think if you did, you got like the Ofra Nikki Tutorials highlighter and one of the lippies, I think. And I think the lippy I already have. I think it's in Verona. So um, that'll go in like a giveaway box if I did get it. I don't know if I made it in time to get it. But I did also sign up for Scentbird. 
Now, Scentbird is a perfume cologne, and they also now have skincare and makeup um, subscription. It's $14.95 a month, and that's for if you want one product. And they send you, like, this huge, like, like I would say deluxe size um, bottle of perfume and it's bigger than a sample. I even think it's, I, I would say it's about the size of a roller ball, maybe even bigger. I think that it's actually bigger than my roller ball. Hold on, let me check. Okay, on. so I just checked and scent birds do in fact have more in them than a roller ball, but they are about the same size as a roller ball. The roller balls come with zero, um, 0 0.02 to five fluid ounces generally some smaller generally but standard is about 0 0.025 well these the scent birds have 0 0.027 so not much more but a little bit more so they're about the standard size of a roller ball and my roller balls of high end like my Dolce & Gabbana light blue is $29 and Scentbird is $14.95 and they do have Dolce & Gabbana light blue. So I'm already saving $10 a month on just getting that perfume. Now yes, when you do buy bigger bottles, you do get more per, per, for your money basically. You get more for your money if you buy in bulk. So you buy a bigger bottle, but I do like the roller balls and the little um, sprays to keep in my purse for when I go to work because who wants to lug an expensive $120 bottle of perfume around with you? And this is a cheaper way to do it and plus what's great about it is you do get to try different scents like every month and I actually after my first month that I just got I've already upgraded so I get two every month so I'm so excited I was not about it at first because I'm like I'm not gonna pay $15 a month for deluxe samples of perfume like how stupid does that sound but after I figured out like the amount for the rollerball versus the amount for Scentbird, it was such a good buy. And for your first, um, for your first one, I think you get half off as well. Uh, I don't. I'm pretty sure they're still running that promotion. I just got mine two weeks ago. So um, also. I have a link that I'm going to put down in my description box. If you use my link, you will get a free perfume yourself. I don't know exactly how that works yet. Um, I don't know if your first month is free or if you get the half off and then you get a free one. But I know you get a free perfume. So if you want to try them out, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. I'm really happy. I know you guys have seen them everywhere. They advertise all over Facebook, Instagram. YouTubers were talking about it forever. And I was sick of hearing about Scentbird. But really, they're amazing. Oh, also they added, they have, if you don't want just perfumes, they have candles. If you get sick of just getting perfumes and you feel like you're getting too many and you don't wear a lot, I wear a lot of perfume every single day. I'm spritzing myself a few times a day because I'm a smoker and I don't want to smell like it. So yuck, you know? Um, but they have candles. They also just got in makeup palettes. Um, they have makeup palettes. They have uh, lipsticks. They have all kinds of stuff. I like like I said, everything, liners, they, and the big brands that I've seen on there so far is Molly, is it Molly or Molly? Um, Kat Von D and Tarte are the main big ones that I've seen on there. I, I don't know, I know I've seen a couple other bigger brands on there too. So they have those and then they have, oh, and then the amazing skincare products are on there too. And then, um... Or Amazing Skin Cosmetics, I'm sorry. Those are on there. And then they also have skincare that Scentbird produces as well. So you have so many options. It's not just perfume anymore. And they're such a good deal. So like I said, if you want to try it, use my little link down below and you get a free perfume. So you really can't beat that. But let me show you how it comes. So first it comes in this little black envelope, kind of like Ipsy. You see this envelope and you know what it is. You know what you're getting. So you get excited every month. 
And then inside um, comes a card that tells you about your perfume. But I also got an extra one that just said, hello, beautiful, basically welcome to Scentbird. And then it shows you how to use it and you want to update your order by the fifth of the month. There's a queue and I already have my whole year planned out with perfumes and you can go change it anytime you want. But my whole year is already planned out with ones I want to try. So it comes in this little velvet baggie, which I think is so awesome. Um, it's really nice and it says scent bird on it. It's a really nice little just velvet baggie and they send you a white little cover for your thing and obviously you twist up like a lipstick and it has the perfume in there and I've already been using mine it has a little label and it's a little squirt pump and then you just put it in here and twist it back down and it's good to go now they do have like cute like bedazzled ones of these and pretty different colors and stuff that you can order for $12.95 but I don't feel a need to really buy those um, I'm happy with the white one. If I want to bedazzle it, I'll just throw some rhinestones on it. But it is a really nice case. So um, I think this is really cool. And I love the whole idea about of it. And when, you're, when you get a new one, you just pop this out and put your new one in there. And boom, throw it in your purse and you're good to go. And this month I got, for my first one, um, I chose one that... I have tried before through Ipsy that I can't find anywhere because it's not one that is in my department stores. Please forgive the noise in the background. My husband is cooking right now. Um, but I got, it's by Catherine Malandrino Leonergie de New York. So this one has citrus, rose, cedar, sandalwood, and musk in it. And it smells like if Dolce & Gabbana light blue and Lancome La Vie Belle had a baby. Like it's got a light musk to it, but it's really light and citrusy and florally at the same time. So it really is like if those two had a baby and it smells so yummy and I haven't been able to find it and I found it on their website. I was so freaking excited. So I got that and then they do have all the Gucci perfumes. They have Versace, they have Burberry, they have Moschino, they have, they have like everything on there. So they have literally like thousands and thousands and thousands of perfumes. They have colognes too. Like I'm starting to order it for my husband as well. Um, he's got a lot of cologne right now, but as soon as he starts getting low, I'm going to start ordering it for him as well to try different colognes. So, and if you do find one that you like, you can just reorder it every month. I am somebody who likes to switch up my scents. Um, during the season. So this is good for me to have something to throw in my bag. That's it for Scentbird. Now we can go ahead. I'm done being a spokesperson for them. And let's get into the questions. Okay, so the first question is, have you ever received a product, tried it, didn't like it, and then decided not to review it? And the answer to that is yes. And it was like, it's happened to me twice now. I've had a couple that I've received that I didn't review. And it was actually in the terms of my agreement with them. And I actually don't accept these terms anymore. But they had said, if you don't like it, please don't post your review. They didn't want the bad reviews. And I wanted the product. I was brand new in my youtuber age and they sent it to me and I didn't like it so I followed what I said I was going to do and just didn't review it at all um it was like a no-name brand so don't worry about even running into it it was like one that you could find on Amazon so no bother there but I have purchased two foundations that I was going to review on this channel and one of them I actually started to review and I said the hell with this we're going to go with a new one and I actually told you guys and left a bad review about it but I didn't do the full wear test and it was the Revlon full coverage foundation that came in like a tube it was god awful probably the worst 
foundation I have ever used in my entire life and that says a lot because I have tried a ton of foundations and not all of them great and this is the very worst and then the second one was the elf foundation I bought it and I was going to do a whole elf challenge but I tried the foundation out first and I hated it everybody was saying how much they liked it for a drugstore and the price point and it's actually not that bad no it's bad I don't like it. Maybe I'm too bougie when it comes to my freaking, you know, foundations. I do like my higher end. But there are good quality drugstore ones out there. And that is not it. The second question is, what is a product you use alone but don't show or use online? Now, as far as products goes... I'm pretty much pretty open with you guys about everything I use online. I'm like looking around and trying to think, what do I use? I don't really do eyebrow tutorials, so maybe my eyebrow products, but there's nothing big there. I use the ABH Dip Brow and the ABH Powder, um, but I'm trying to think. Well, I guess one thing I use like daily that I don't use a lot in all of my videos because I'm trying new stuff out all the time is you guys have seen me rave about this before, but I don't use it all the time in my videos and it's the L'Oreal Hydra Perfect setting powder. This is my favorite drugstore powder. But other than that, like I'm pretty much open with you guys. I Whatever I use here, I use on my videos. Once I find a product I like, I like to share it with the world, so I'm not really secretive with my secrets. Maybe skincare would be one. A lot of my skincare I don't share with you guys, so maybe I should start. Okay, number three is actually kind of a hard question. What is a product you want but won't buy because you don't support the brand? This is so hard because I am... A youtuber who has a very small 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 minuscule following um, I love each and every one of my members but we are a small little community channel in the grand scheme of YouTube okay and I may ruin my chances of ever ever getting PR from this person or from this brand but at this point I don't care because I don't support them a lot of people don't and that's two-faced now I used to love Too Faced, Too Faced and the product that they make that I want and I still love but I won't buy and have looked for other options because I don't support them is the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I don't like many of their, prim their, their products but I love that primer. That primer is amazing for my dry skin but... It's not so much Too Faced I don't support. I just don't support the owner. And I know he's been bought out since then or he's sold or whatever. But I just don't like the guy. So, yeah, I'll probably never, ever, 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 ever get PR from this company ever. But it is what it is. Number four, I don't understand. It says, do you have any blocked words? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. We'll come back to that. Number five is, do you delete comments? If so, why? And the answer is very easy. No, I do not delete comments. If it's something that I don't like or disagree with, everybody is allowed to have their opinion, even the trolls. So if you want to come on trolling, that's fine. I actually just had my first troller on my Instagram the other day. Um, and I did end up blocking her just because it was a sensitive issue that she um, decided to open her big, ugly, fat mouth on. But I'm a pretty tough girl. If you want to dish it out, you want to troll me, I'll troll you right back. And you better pray to God that your shit is clean as hell and that you have a private, private, private life. Because you want to come for me in my life, I'm going to come right back. And that's just how I am. Sorry. I'm not going to pretend to be Miss Nice Girl. If you're going to be a bitch to me, I'm going to be a bitch to you. And that's just how it is. 
Okay, well, that brings us to the next question, I guess. Number six is, do you block people? I sure the hell will if I need to, but generally, no. Generally, I don't. And I don't... Usually trolls don't stick around. Again, I'm on a smaller scale. I'm sure if I were on a larger scale like Jeffree Star or, you know, Shane Dawson or um, even the troll herself, Laura Lee, if I were any of them, yeah, I would probably block people because they get so much hate every single day and it's got to be emotionally draining. Even if you know it's not true and you don't believe it, it it can still eat at you. But I'm on such a small scale that I don't get very much hate. Um, I've gotten maybe the whole time I've been on YouTube, the whole like year and a half I've been on YouTube, I've gotten maybe like two trolley type comments and they don't bug me. Be off with them, you know? Who cares? They have no lives. Question number seven is, have you ever lied about a product to stay on good terms with the brand? Well, I don't get PR yet, and I would hope to. Well, I don't get very much. So I've gotten a few things here and there, um, little bits of products here and there sent to me so far. Um, but I've never needed to lie about a product. Like I said, I, I won't lie about a product, period. Like, if I don't like it, I don't like it. It's going to read all over my face. I'm not a magician. I can't make shit look better. Like, if it looks like crap, it's going to look like crap, you know? Like, but no, I've never, and I will never, and that's one thing I can swear to you guys on my life, I will never lie to you guys about a product, especially just to save face with a brand. Number eight is, have you ever initially liked a product when you reviewed it and then changed your mind but didn't let your audience know? And the answer to this is yes. Um, and it wasn't intentionally not letting you guys know. It was just that we had already moved on by the time I retried said products and changed my mind. I've had products, and I've told you guys this. If you guys have been with me a long time, that's why I now do my foundation reviews. I try them out for two weeks before I record them, like record the wear tests on my channel because there has been too many times when I've done first impressions and ended up changing my mind. There's been foundations like that I hated right off the bat, like the Becca Ultimate, the Ultimate Coverage one, hated it right off the bat. Now it's one of my favorite full, full, full coverage. Like if I'm going for photos or something, that is the foundation I go to. Um, I've now repurchased that foundation three times and I hate it. I reviewed it horribly. And then there's been ones that I loved that I've worn again and absolutely hate. So it goes both ways and I don't always follow up. But again, that's why I've also changed the way that I do my reviews. I actually try things out first, wear them, and then review. I don't do first impressions really too often anymore. Who is an influencer you don't trust? That is number nine. An influencer I don't trust. That's easy. Manny MUA and Laura Lee. Just saying. I don't think I need to say anymore because some of you on my channel may like them and I'm not going to bash anyone. You know, she may be a good wholesome person and so Manny may be, but just from what I've seen, I have formed my opinion on them and I don't fully trust them nor like them. Number 10, who is an influencer you trust the most? And it's funny because one of the influencers I trust the most, okay, there's two. There's one that's really, really well known. And there's one that maybe a lot of you don't know um, and you should know because she's amazing. And she hasn't been on YouTube very much lately, but she is going to be coming back soon, I hope. And the first one, the big one that you guys know is Jeffree Star. And I love him because he's got a big mouth like me. He doesn't hold back. And he doesn't need to be nice to companies to stay on their PR list. He doesn't need to because he has the money to go out and purchase. Most of the time, he goes out and purchases a lot of the products anyway that he reviews. He does get sent a shit ton of PR. I'm not negating that. But he's somebody I actually trust his opinion on. And because he hasn't steered me wrong next or yet. Nikki Tutorials used to be that for me. 
not so much anymore. I've kind of fallen off her bandwagon a little bit. I love the girl. I think she is so sweet. She is so genuine. She is just adorable, but um, she's not somebody I really, really look to. And then Shanna XO is another one that I trust a lot. I thought there was only a couple, but there's actually a few. Um, but the one person that I really, really trust because her and I are on the same wavelength when it comes to things. And if you haven't heard of her, you need to go ch check her out. Her name is Makeup by Shay. I just love her to pieces, first of all. She has the best personality. And she is so genuine and just has the biggest freaking heart, this girl. And... She's a New Yorker, so she's got a bigger-than-life personality, and I just love her to pieces. And she is, like me, we're more mature-skinned women, and that's why I love watching her, because it's hard to tell how a makeup is going to look on someone when they're 20 years old and have no wrinkles and no pores and it's hard to tell how it's going to look on me when the person applying it is 20 years old so I like watching women who are in their 30s and 40s and even 50s so that way I can get a real woman with real skins review you know and not to say that those 20 year olds aren't real reviews they totally are it's just I'm in my 30s. I need someone who has skin like me. Someone who is aging like me. So that's just, it is what it is. Okay, so number 11 is what secret tips or product application you don't show while on camera. Now, I don't really have very much that I don't show, but one thing that isn't shown on here, the only thing I can really think of, there's actually two things I can kind of even, that would fit that category, is I let my foundation, before I put my powder on, I let my foundation dry down for anywhere from two to five minutes. I know that's a long time to wait, but I like it fully set down so I don't have to pack a lot of powder on. If you have dry skin like me, let your foundation fully dry as much as it can. And one thing I do too um, that I started doing again is I will spray the all-nighter spray over my foundation, let it completely dry for two to five minutes, and then put my powder on. That way, I don't need to use as much. It's already dried down because when you put it, go in with the powder right after, when it's still wet, it's going to cling and get real cakey and just hold on to as much powder as possible. This way, you're not needing to use quite as much. So that's one thing. And the other thing is kind of similar. Like um, before I go in and put the powder on my concealer, uh, to set my concealer, I'll go back in with my beauty blender and just kind of blend everything out again so that there's no creasing whatsoever. So those are the only two little secrets. Oh, one more I just thought of. Um, I even had a, a one of our uh, viewers ask me why I leave foundation on my lips before I put my lipstick on because I know a lot of you guys may not do it or you may wipe it off. I do it because it kind of acts as a primer and it makes my lipstick stay on a lot longer and it makes it more pigmented and um, just more, yeah, just more pigmented and I usually have, it's basically like priming your lips, you know? So that's why I leave the foundation on my lips and don't wipe it off before I put lipstick on. Question number 12. Have you ever showed one product but were actually using another? No. And I've actually just heard of people using this or doing that. I never even thought, that thought never even crossed my mind. You know what I mean? So James Charles, I guess, said he used to do this all the time where he used to use the same old tired like drugstore products but to try to get like um, on people's PRs list and stuff and get their attention, he used to, you know, tag them saying he was wearing their products when he in fact wasn't. And that was the first I'd ever heard of someone even doing that. So no, that is a no for me. No, I never even, the thought never even crossed my mind. 13, have you ever not disclosed a sponsorship? No. I am so excited when I do get anyone to like, 
freaking send me PR or sponsor me. I would share it with the world, to be honest. Like, and whoever I choose to, like, become sponsored by when the time comes, trust me, they will only be brands that I trust and would use their products myself because I am not going to be messing with any unethical type of shady companies and yeah have you ever had number 14 says have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand and not per well not personally because again i'm not a big youtuber a lot of these questions are geared more towards the bigger influencers but um i've just i've i've had actual Basically, I've had, um, I don't know if you would even say, because they're, the person's not a brand, they're an influencer who turned brand, but I've had an influencer block me because I kind of told them about themselves and let them know, and it wasn't even about themselves, like, I told them that their eyeshadow sucked, and they may want to, I didn't tell them in those words, I was even a lot nicer than that, I don't like the person, their eyeshadow sucked, they need to go back to the drawing board, and people need to quit lying and kissing their ass because their eyeshadow is not good, and I, you know, I probably should have just, you know, done what my mama said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, but I got a big mouth, so I didn't, and I opened my big mouth, and I got blocked, so that was the only, like, I guess, close thing to bad interaction. Number 15, have you ever bandwagoned with other people's thoughts on a particular product? No, and here's why. I can't. I can't just jump and bandwagon and just be like, oh my God, that's so great. Or, oh God, I will never try that. That sucks. As a matter of fact, I, I came very, very, very close. So two times, the both times I came close was the Jaclyn Hill um, vault palettes and the ABH subculture palettes. Um, I wasn't going to get either one at all, at all, at all, at all. Because subculture, we saw everything we saw the fallout the the freaking just horrible 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 product you know but when I got it I was able to make it work and I didn't think it was half bad of a product and I told you guys that I didn't think it was that bad it wasn't like you know modern renaissance but it wasn't bad so I'm not gonna bandwagon and the vault I wasn't gonna pick up at all you guys because everybody was talking all kinds of shit but I actually, when I went and bought the Morphe foundation, I actually just picked it up. So, and I've been playing with it quite a bit. I haven't done a review on it because there's already so many reviews out there. But I will say that three out of the four palettes I found to be pretty decent. One of the palettes was not good at all, and it was the one that I liked the most, unfortunately. Well, not all the shadows in it were bad, just a couple pretty much just the mattes were really bad they're not blendable and even though they were repressed reformulator or whatever they still suck but three out of the four were good so i can't hate too much i got my money's worth at least they're cheap shadows last but not least the last question number 16 is things that other creators do that get on your nerves now i think for me is creators kissing people's ass when the products are not good is one thing. Um, or pushing people to basically buy these super high-end expensive products or like almost like a keeping up with the Joneses effect. I know when I first got into YouTube, I felt like I had to keep up with the Joneses to like be relevant because these people were just pushing high, high, high end that is just not realistic for the everyday person. And that's one thing that I stopped really watching Nikki tutorials on. Nikki tutorials started out using kind of like I do, both a mixture of high end, low end, um, mid, mid grade products, not super, super high end. I do, you know, like 
my designer makeup like Dior and stuff, but I'm not out here pushing La Mer. I do like a Natasha Denona palette every once in a while, but you guys don't see me using those. And I've actually told you guys, I don't use those very often because I almost feel guilty doing the reviews because I know not a lot of my subscribers can afford to go purchase a freaking $129 palette or a $185 palette. It's just not realistic for the everyday person, you know? So that's kind of one thing. It, they become unrelatable at that point. And I feel like a lot of creators, especially when they get on, they start getting sent tons of PR they're not paying for a lot of these products. Like I always say, I buy all my own products. And I feel like a lot of creators need to humble themselves back down and remember where they came from. You know, there's some, and remember what their subscribers want to see. You know, remember the everyday person that they used to be. Think about those budgets. Think about those products. Yes, throw in the high end. I'm not saying don't use high end, but don't just shove high end all day long down our throats. You know what I mean? Because you have girls going into debt over this shit. Girls spending their freaking whole life savings away on makeup that's going to expire in 6 to 12 months. You know? It doesn't make any damn sense. You know, if this is not your job or if this is not, you don't have a channel and you're not, don't go, don't go buy all this shit. Don't just use these as a review. If it's something that you're wanting, just use it as a review. Don't go buy everything I put in my videos. Please don't because I have a beyond wild shopping habit. And the reason I started YouTube was to give me a reason for my habit. I already had this habit. I was already buying all this shit before I had a YouTube. This just gave me my basically justification for it, if you will. But the average girl does not need this much damn makeup. It's ridiculous. Think about even 10 years ago, none of us were buying makeup like this. None of us. And we were getting along just fine and we were just as gorgeous. So, I feel like, all in all, creators, influencers, remember where you came from and humble yourselves. Be humble, bitch. Sit down. And with that, that's the end of our questions. I will be back this week with a couple Valentine's tutorials. So I will see you guys soon. I love you so much. Have a great day. Goodbye.